Hi, this is Tom Stokel, Global Technical Lead for AutoCAD Product Support. In this tutorial, I want to talk about some of the most common tasks you do immediately after installing AutoCAD 2010. We'll touch on subjects like initial startup, registration and activation, installing the VBA enabler, and I will also discuss uh, uninstalling and repairing your existing installations. As I said, the focus in this tutorial is not on installation of AutoCAD, but on the things you do after it's installed. If you want more information on how to install AutoCAD 2010, you can reference some of our existing product support tutorial videos. There's a video on standalone installation of AutoCAD, network installation of AutoCAD, and then installing and configuring the Autodesk Network License Manager. You can find these solutions at the Autodesk Services and Support website by just typing in the TS number into one of the search fields, or you can access the solution directly by going to usa.autodesk.com slash getdoc slash id equals and then put in the entire TS number. All right, let's get started. On this machine, I previously installed a copy of AutoCAD 2010 and I'm ready to launch it for the first time. The first thing I see is an option to migrate custom settings from an earlier version of AutoCAD. If you don't have an earlier version of AutoCAD installed, you won't see this dialog. But AutoCAD has detected that I have a previous version of AutoCAD installed and so it's offering to migrate my previous settings. If you want to migrate settings from an earlier version, you can choose which version from this list, in my case I only have a 2009 there, and then from this list below you can choose which settings and files you want to migrate. Whatever you choose will be migrated into the current AutoCAD and created under a new user profile which will be active in the current AutoCAD. As a rule, I recommend not doing the migration in the beginning. Go ahead and let AutoCAD start up, initialize, let it get settled, make sure everything's working well, and you can always go back and migrate the custom settings later. If you want to migrate settings later, you can just go to the AutoCAD that's installed on your system, under Migrate Custom Settings, and choose Migrate from a previous release. So for now, I'll just hit Cancel and skip this and I'll migrate later. Next, you'll see the Initial Setup Wizard. This lets you tailor your AutoCAD environment based on your industry. The choices you make here will affect default settings for different AutoCAD functionality like what templates get used, your Autodesk Seek filters, and your workspaces. So if you want to customize it to your industry, you can just pick that industry, pick next, and then you can choose which different tools you want to come on by default. For example, if I always want sheet sets and 3D modeling to come on by default, I can check those now, and those tools will be active in the workspace. Next, I can specify which drawing template I want. So I can use the AutoCAD 2010 default templates, or I can specify some existing templates that I have, or I can use default templates based on the industry that I picked. At this point, I can go ahead and start AutoCAD 2010. Let me go back a little bit. If you don't want to do this at all, you can choose the Skip option. And then you have the option to have it remind you of initial setup every time AutoCAD starts, or you can uncheck this and it will not display again. The initial setup dialog is still accessible from AutoCAD in the Options menu, so you can always get back to this if you want it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start AutoCAD. The first thing I need to do is activate this copy of AutoCAD. If I had previously installed and activated this serial number, it would have automatically reactivated the AutoCAD and not run me through an activation process. But because I've never activated this serial number, it's going to require me to activate it. So I'll choose Activate. Now my options are to either get an activation code online or enter an activation code. This is an option you would use if you had previously contacted Autodesk to get an activation code, say by email, and they had uh, emailed you the activation code, in which case you could paste it into this section down here or type the activation code in if you needed to. But I'm just going to have it do an online activation. So I'll choose Get an Activation Code and hit Next. The next step is to log into Autodesk using your user ID and password. If you have previously registered other products, then you would have had to create a user ID and password, and you could enter that here. If you've never done that, then you'll need to create a user ID now. So you choose Create User ID, and then provide the information that's requested. You then need to provide additional information for how this product is going to be registered. 
and you get one more screen to confirm the information you've provided. If there's any changes you need to make, you pick back to edit, otherwise you can just accept it. I then confirm that this is the product and serial number I want to register to this account. Hit next. And now my activation is complete and it has provided me an activation code. Also, it's worth noting that a copy of the registration information gets saved to your local drive and it gives you a link to that information here. So now I'm done and I'll just pick finish. The next thing you'll see is the new features workshop. This provides an overview of some of the new features that are in this particular version of AutoCAD. So you can view the new feature workshop now, or you can choose maybe later, in which case it will come up every time you start AutoCAD. Or if you've already reviewed it, you can just say, no, don't show me this again. So in my case, I've already reviewed it. I'll say, don't show it to me again, hit OK. And now AutoCAD is started up and ready for me to use. Once you're up and running, there's one more thing you may need to do, and that is install the VBA enabler. Autodesk has begun gradually transitioning away from VBA and moving towards the newer .NET technologies. VBA is still supported in AutoCAD, however it's no longer automatically included in the AutoCAD 2010 installation. This holds true for all Autodesk products except for Inventor 2010 and Civil 3D 2010. So if VBA is something that you need to be able to run, then you'll have to download and install the VBA enabler as a separate operation. Let me show you what that'll look like. I'll issue a command that would rely on VBA, and you get a message indicating that VBA is not installed, and then there's a link to an Autodesk website where you can download the enabler. So you click on the link, and then choose the module that's appropriate to your operating system. I'll choose the 64-bit module, and then I'll just save that to my local drive. After the module is downloaded, you want to close AutoCAD and then run the file you just downloaded in order to extract the contents. It'll unzip the contents to a default directory that's on the local drive, but you can change that to something else if you need to. Once extraction is complete, it automatically launches the installation wizard for the VBA enabler. And then you just run through the very simple installation, accept the license agreement, and it'll report which products have been detected and can be updated. And just choose next, and then let the installer run. Once installation is complete, you can click finish to close the installation wizard and then relaunch AutoCAD. And now if I issue the same command again, you can see that VBA is now installed. The installation module is English only, but it can be installed on all language versions and you can use the same VBA module for all supported 2010 products. Now let's talk about the process of uninstalling or modifying an existing AutoCAD installation. To make changes to your installation, you need to go to the control panel and pick uninstall a program. Now this is Windows 7, it's also similar to this in Windows Vista. If you're running XP, you would still go to the control panel and then pick add or remove programs. Once here, select the AutoCAD 2010 installation and pick uninstall slash change. Again, in XP, this would be uh, selecting the AutoCAD installation and picking the change slash remove button. The AutoCAD installation wizard then opens up in a maintenance mode, which allows you to add or remove features, repair or reinstall uh, your installation, or completely uninstall the product from your computer. You would use the Add or Remove Features option if you want to add or remove any AutoCAD features from your current installation. For example, if you had chosen a custom installation when you first installed AutoCAD and now there are some features that you want to put in that you didn't include before, or there are some features that you need to take out. Here you'll see a feature list similar to what you saw in the installation wizard. And from here you can go through and remove or add anything that you may need 
And what this will do is update the existing installation to include or remove uh, whatever you've checked here in the list. That's about all there is to this. Um, you notice you can't change the product installation path. If we allowed changing of the path, it could result in uh, program corruption because you're, you're adding or removing features. So that option is not available. And then when you're ready, just hit next and you'll get one more confirmation screen. And then you can hit next again to make the changes that you want to make. The repair or reinstall option is a good one to use if something has gone wrong with your installation. For example, you've accidentally deleted or altered some files that AutoCAD requires. And perhaps AutoCAD is not performing the way it should be, or you're getting some error messages. This is a good way to go back and put AutoCAD back into its original state. From this screen, you can choose to repair the installation or reinstall AutoCAD. Repairing the installation is a good place to start. It'll take less time than doing a full reinstallation of AutoCAD, and it'll return AutoCAD to its default state by reinstalling any files that have been modified or removed. Again, this is a good option if you've accidentally deleted files or altered some files that are required by the program. If repairing an installation doesn't work, then you can try doing a reinstall and this will completely reinstall AutoCAD over the top of whatever's there. All files will be updated. This is your next best option if a simple repair doesn't work. And when you're doing a reinstallation of the product, you don't need to have the original disks on hand. All the installation data is cached locally on your drive, and that's the data that gets used when reinstalling. If you have custom settings that you want to reuse after this process is complete, then you should export them and then later re-import them back into the system after you've done the repair or reinstall. For more information on that, you can choose the link in the sidebar. And then this little help topic gives you more information on the process of exporting and importing custom settings within the same release. If you want to remove AutoCAD completely, then you would choose the uninstall option. When you choose this option, all of the installed components are removed. This means that even if you've previously added or removed components or you've reinstalled or repaired, the uninstall is going to remove all AutoCAD installation files from your system. To do this, you just choose uninstall and then next, and it'll begin uninstalling AutoCAD. If you've installed any add-ons to AutoCAD, those will appear in this list separately and will need to be uninstalled separately. Updates or service packs to AutoCAD will automatically be uninstalled when AutoCAD itself is uninstalled. In summary, I've shown you some of the most common tasks that you'll do immediately after installing AutoCAD. This includes first launch, the initial setup wizard, the process of activating and registering your copy of AutoCAD, installing the VBA enabler, and then I showed you how to uninstall and repair an existing installation. I hope this information has been useful in getting your AutoCAD up and running. Until next time, thanks for watching.